why do we have two ears? Now, it might seem like a silly question to begin with because most good questions sound a little silly. The question really is, wouldn't one ear do? Right? Now, let's begin to try and answer this question. But before we do that, we want you to get an experience of something. So, I know that most of you have what's called the earphones around. Yeah? If you aren't using them, wear them. And we want you to close your eyes after you wear your earphones and really begin to experience this. Welcome back. Now, what was your experience? You were wearing your earphones and you heard a noise from one side and you heard a noise from the other side. And the question I'm going to ask you is, how did you know that the one, one sound was from one side and the other sound was from the other? How did you know that? What in your brain, what in your experience told you? Because you know that it was a earphone. It wasn't really, all the sounds were created by the earphones. You, don't, you know that it's not really that the sound came from that side. Right? We could even create even more interesting experiences. But the question really is, how does your brain know this? How do you know that it's coming from a different side? You might argue that one side is louder than the other, yeah, but that's only part of the story. And the real deal is here. Because if you were to take this and logically extend it, you would find out so many more interesting things. The first thing we need to understand is, our brain or our ears are extremely sensitive to sounds timing. So you can, you can differentiate sounds within like one fraction of seconds. Which means that what your brain really does is if you have a sound coming from here, it's going to reach this here in a particular time. In other words, sound, as you could see, right? Sound tra propagates through a medium, right? Does it do it instantaneously? You could see that, right? You pushed a slinky, it took some time to travel. So what exactly determines the, the speed of sound? We're going to see, right? But we know it has some speed, yeah? So it's going to come and reach this here and it's going to take some more time to reach this here. So what does your brain do? Takes the time difference between these two sounds. If this was occurring before this, then the sound must be exactly over here. Right? Somewhere over here. Now this time lag was lesser and lesser and lesser. You know the sound somewhere here and somewhere here and somewhere here. If it's zero, you know it's probably somewhere in the front or somewhere in the back or something like that. Very symmetric. Or if this here begins to hear it faster, then the sound starts coming over here. In other words, you know it's going to be somewhere along this side. And the maximum difference in time means that it's going to be exactly somewhere over here. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. In other words, evolution is extremely efficient. If it keeps two things for, you know, if it keeps two years, it will not do it without a purpose. Rather, without a purpose, that can only be achieved by two years because any other thing can be achieved by just one year. But this particular functionality of being able to take the time difference between these two years and thereby predict where the sound came is very useful because we were hunters. Right? We needed to see where it came. Or even if somebody was chasing us, we needed to figure out where the sound came from. Now, the really interesting thing here is that a scorpion does something very similar, but at a much more efficient, nuanced level. Because we use, say, two ears. It has about six legs along with its two antennae, or what it's called, the claws. So each of its six legs perceive waves on the sand. So if it's a desert scorpion, six legs put into the sand, measuring waves on the sand. So we, don't, we might not be able to see this. But when an animal or a little prey, as far as the scorpion is concerned, moves along the soil, along the sand, the desert sand rather, not really soil, what, what you observe is that little waves are created. And the scorpion, by figuring out which leg the wave reaches first and which leg the wave reaches last, takes these time differences and almost exactly pinpoints where the prey must be and dashes towards it. Really interesting, right? So we're kind of doing the same thing, except at our level, because we don't, we're not really trying to dash towards prey that much. Yeah, we have other vision, other things that are more useful for us. We have our sight, which is our predominant sensory perception, comes from sight. So great. So one of the questions we've answered and unlocked right now is, why do we have two ears?